This is the digital music trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with the home stage DC. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or Developer.MusicGraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and it's a real pleasure today to have uh, uh, Nick Dupre and uh, Cather Catherine uh, Woodywis from uh, Homestage uh, DC. Thanks for joining me, how's it going? Hi, going well, thank you. It's great to have you. And so uh, I, I came across Homestage DC from the South by Southwest uh, database and also the schedule so I got really interested in the project. So uh, first of all let's introduce it, uh, what is it? Well. <laughs> I'll, I'll start um, by introducing what Homestage is, and then maybe you want to describe our talk a little bit. Um, so Homestage is an organization that seeks to provide an alternative uh, to fans and musicians trying to experience music. Um, it's founded on the idea that the, the traditional music industry forces are such that it is hard for uh, bands and artists to have access to, um, most importantly, booking gigs, if you're not uh, what you might describe as a music industry insider. Yeah. And so um, we have founded an organization that builds on the momentum of DIY house shows and uh, live shows happening in alternative spaces and not the traditional venues. Um, and our organization seeks to cultivate, grow, and sustain that um, and establish it as an alternative for fans and musicians in our community to experience music in that way. That's awesome. And so how did you come about this idea? You know, what was the, the trigger that got you to actually start it? Yeah, we actually, Nick and I are uh, wild proponents of the idea, but we, it was not our original idea. It's, it's been a shared and inherited idea among several friends, colleagues, fellow music enthusiasts throughout DC for several years now. So we are the most recent public facing proponents of it, awesome. I would say. Um, but we are very excited to be here and, and to talk about the process of how this all came together. And yeah. um, part of what our talk will focus on is what we've been able to build together as a community collaboratively and not just Nick or myself building it from scratch alone. And uh, we're looking forward to getting the community in the room with us tomorrow at our talk to um, help us build further. So we're, we're looking at it as a very a kind of uh, doing it together on the fly, prototyping as we go, yeah. model. And so, so how did how did, did that community come together? Uh, it, it, did it start with a community of uh, music lovers that wanted to have musicians in their homes, or was it musicians proposing to go into mm -hmm. people's homes? A little bit of everything. The wonderful thing about DC is it is an incredibly musical town, um, and a lot of the musicians there are hobbyists are doing excellent music on the side on top of their day jobs and so um, Nick is a musician I'm a musician we both play we both love hosting in our homes but uh, we both stumbled upon a very a very um, diverse and, and sort of organic collection of people that wanted to do the same thing so we we started connecting the community that already existed um, so homestage is an outgrowth of, of things that are already happening and yeah. and going on in DC that's fantastic. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, I, I, would, I would add um, that what we're trying to do with the community is um, organize it, as Catherine alluded yeah. to. So, um, you know, for example, um, people who want to host house shows, um, you know, don't necessarily have all the means or the or the knowledge to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, given that this, we want this to be open access, we want to provide alternatives. Um, what we're trying to do is give people the means, the resources, and the know-how to do that. So, if, yeah. for example, you don't you want to host a house show, um, you've maybe got some friends who want to play, but you want to get a more established band who can bring some people in. Yeah. We'll, we'll connect you with that. We know those people. We've got resource listings. We've got people to help. Um, you don't have a PA. We'll find somebody with a PA. You don't know how to run sound. We'll we'll help you. We'll be there. Um, we'll you know we'll we'll help you every step of the way. So that's that's the whole idea. We don't want. Um, we don't want there to be any obstacles between someone who's interested in, in making this kind of entertainment happen and actually making it happen. Um, and great. so we want to remove those obstacles. And so I know that there's a lot of um, uh, projects uh, around, you know, uh, uh, making music in a shed or, you know, all sorts of different things happening around the world, which, which is fantastic. And in terms of, of that, you know, have you looked at uh, 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 recording any of the gigs or do you feel like it's all uh, a very exclusive uh, fact that everybody's there and there's no need to be a record of it? You know, what's, it, what's your take on that? It's a great. That's a great question. Um, I, 
there are certain, um, you know, every house wants to do things differently, and yeah. we don't we don't want to dictate. We don't want to pres- sure. prescribe, you know, how it should be done. I think one of our only interests is that artists get paid. As far as recording things, um, I would love to do that. Um, and there are houses. There is a very famous DIY house in DC called the Paper House that has booked a whole bunch of great bands over the years. Um, and they actually have room mics and they run it downstairs to a 32 track mixer and they render a really high quality live recording of your, your show, both awesome. from the board and from the room mics. And it's, yeah, and um, where they're going with it might become something that looks a little bit like Day Trotter, except something more live and electric. Yeah. Um, and so they have a chance to, to put that on the map and, and we, we're going to help them get there. So there's, yeah, I mean, there's many opportunities to record what's happening in your homes and I, I in, in as much as we have the recording equipment and the means and that know how to do it we definitely want to make that happen we want to feature it i yeah. would love to use a technology like mixler which you may yeah, be familiar sure. with of course to like broadcast something like that live oh you're you're not in dc or you can't make it tonight well don't worry we're streaming it live you know, yeah. that's the kind of thing i'd love to do Any, anything to add yeah, um, I just wanted to mention something you mentioned, you know, kind of being exclusive. And actually, our, our model is driven by the belief of being inclusive. Yeah. Um, we have, there's something that's very intimate about hosting somebody in your living room or playing in somebody's living room. And we love that vibe. Anybody that's been to a house show or performed in one knows how um, remarkable that kind of magnetic energy between artists and fans can be in person. Yeah. Um, but one thing that we've consistently heard from artists as well as fans is loving the idea of there being multiples of those shows around, that this is not your one and only chance to see this artist. You actually sure. can build a relationship with this artist in multiple locations over time, or you as a house can host multiple times per week or per month. Um, and so the, the model is, you know, we recognize natural limitations and constraints within the venue itself yeah, or, you know, the, the how many times an artist can or want to play. But uh, we're actually not looking to be extremely exclusive, rather um, opening up this kind of music and this kind of model to as many people as we can. Yeah, sure. And uh, so uh, in regards to the shows, uh, are, are there uh, any houses that charge for people to go in? How, how does it work? Uh, do they operate to be like small venues, some of them, or is it all open access? How does it work? Again, it's a little bit um, house by house, yeah. but our, our, as Nick said, our main priority is that the artists get paid. Sure. We've usually found that um, having a pass the hat system tends to actually work really well. Um, people come in and are so, uh, there's just, again, when there's a, a very personal relationship happening, yeah. um, people are much more likely to spontaneously give a lot more. Um, when an artist is selling their merch in the back corner of somebody's living room and you now feel like you know the artist, you're much more likely to buy their CDs or their t-shirts or sign up on their email list. So yeah. um, again, we, we try not to, we haven't instituted any sort of universal yeah. Yeah, let me, practice. Let me but, yeah, yeah there, there are houses, as Catherine said, that you know, might charge a, a donation, say five dollars at the door, sure. and it's usually a great deal. It's like five dollars yeah, exactly, for two yeah. or three bands that are pretty good. Um, but yeah, again, we don't we don't collect any money, and the houses aren't typically collecting any money either. Um, we we sort of discourage that. Although some of them are doing it for for very good causes, so they, yeah. they might be donating money to uh, you know a, a you know an arts movement or a literary magazine or some sort of some sort of cause. Based. It's not profit based, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, uh, we d- we we just want to make sure that you know artists get paid, and there's a variety of ways to do that, and we yeah. can offer suggestions, but there's no one right way. So. Yeah, sure. And of course, you know, I, I would imagine that with it uh, being a pretty popular site uh, in DC, you may get a, a bands from out of town as well that are passing through that want to play. So how do you how do you arrange that? How, how does that work? Yeah. And that's that's a fun thing. Um, yeah. So we we've ha- we've established some connections. Um, through DC artists that have toured enough that everybody knows their name. I'm, I'm referring to the Paper House again. I'll, I'll bring yeah. that back up. Um, and we get, because through him and now through our own kind of reputation, um, we get a lot of referrals from out-of-town bands saying, I'm going to be in DC. Um, you know, I could I could put my name out to all the traditional venues, but I'd love to play a house show. Yeah. Um, can you help us? And so, yeah, we have a process by which we 
you know, collect all that and, and, you know, do some curation, listen, try to figure out what's good and what would be a fit and then send that out to people who we know are interested in hosting. And, you know, and very often um, that's exactly what happens. A house will listen and say, these guys sound great. I want them in my living room. Yeah. We don't, we're not able to book everybody. And, um, but we do try to be as, as responsive as we can. And what, one of the things we're really excited about is, is trying to automate that process. And that's yeah. where the technology comes in and, and uh, <laughs> making, you know, ha one of the things that we're, we're working on is, you know, fill, fill out a form and then it creates a Google Calendar entry and it's a public Google Calendar that people can look at and say, oh, these are the groups that are going to be here this night. And then I also want to, uh, we also want to put together like a, a solution for allowing people to listen to those bands yeah. um, through a SoundCloud playlist or some automated process. Yeah, uh, you were talking about automated processes, and uh, I was wondering uh, with the success of the of uh, Homestage DC, have you been approached by uh, people in other cities that were asking you advice as to how to set up a similar model in their own hometowns? You want to take that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that we are at a stage where. Um, we st we have a lot more to do in DC, in DC yeah. before, but but replicability is definitely something we're thinking about. Sustainability, replicability. Um, certainly, the technologies behind the website and the things that we were just describing, the processes, yeah. are very repeatable, and that's that's what's exciting. Yeah. Um, but there are there are other other cities doing this well. I'll, I'll mention uh, a group, uh, DIY PHL, which is in Philadelphia. Great. Who they don't they don't do booking, but they have this really robust like submit a show process where yeah. if you're hosting a show, and we have this process too, but they they have like hundreds of shows submitted, and we have a lesser amount, but we're getting yeah, there. Sure. <laughs> um, and so there, yeah. I mean, we have some role models, but uh, people certainly have come to us and said, yeah, this is great. How yeah. do I do this? And and we're focused on building out and, and mastering it in our own community before we take it somewhere else. That's great. Anything to add to you? Just, we love to hear from people, though. So we yeah. always, we never turn anybody away. <laughs> yeah. so. That's great. And so uh, I wanted to ask you about the scene in DC. I mean, I, I was struck last year. I, mean, I didn't know much about the music scene in DC, to be quite honest. And uh, last year, I listened to uh, Dave Grohl's uh, keynote, uh, where he mentioned the fact that uh, uh, his uh, musical roots were in the fact that he essentially uh, left home and went to DC, or I think he got moved to DC, or something happened, yeah. and he ended up uh, there, and uh, in, in the middle of the punk movements and uh, mm -hmm. all the rock stuff that was happening. So, uh, from then, how has it evolved, and sure. what is the DC uh, music scene like today? I'll start on you. Um, um, yeah, the, the the punk scene and the hardcore scene is the, is very much alive. Yeah. Um, uh, there's there's a, a proud legacy of that, and and there's a proud legacy of of sort of DIY punk and hardcore in DC that happens in alternative spaces and kind of a. Um, rejection of, of traditional music industry stuff. That was what Fugazi was all about back in the day, and that, that still exists. Um, and uh, there certainly is a, a proud history of uh, soul, go-go, funk, and that continues to exist in various forms in DC, and we're really excited about being a part of that. Um, yeah. And then I think Catherine would love to tell you about folk and bluegrass. Yeah, well, there's, <laughs> sure. a, there's a robust folk and bluegrass scene in DC, um, a little bit more uh, accidental than, than individual names, yeah. I think, but um, I think one, one great thing as well is DC is not only producing excellent artists like um, I don't know how we would even describe Louis Weeks, but <laughs> experimental. yeah, architectural yeah. soundscapes. Yeah. You know, he was just mentioned by NPR as one of ten artists to listen to. He's he lives in Mount Pleasant, a, a very musical-minded neighborhood in DC, etc. So there are there are people that we know and and many people that we don't that are creating excellent music in DC. Another cool thing is that DC is also proving itself to be very music hungry. Yeah. So even if you're not from DC, artists that come through and do the lower, the kind of lower level venues, house shows have been finding incredible success in DC. So one example, um, that we both know a little bit from personal experience and we'll be talking about tomorrow is a group called the David Wax Museum, which are kind of Mexicana folk, the, uh, you know, yeah. the, the broad genre Mexicana folk. Um, and they, they came through uh, uh, four or five years ago now and right. very intentionally lo focused on the bluegrass folk-minded communities in D.C., organized everyone in a series of house shows, and that through the relationships they built, the email list they called, you know, got voted into Newport Folk Festival and just took off from there. So DC is also demonstrably kind of, uh, there's a hunger for really good music and a real excitement about it as well. That's which great. Is, yeah, it's just a great, it's a great feeling to, <laughs> to have. So. Yeah, it's, uh, no, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, of course, it shakes off some of the perceptions from uh, out-of-towners, I guess, of, of DC being, Absolutely. you know, uh, very government, you know. Yeah. If you watch yep. if you watch House of Cards, is that's not the DC <laughs> that comes through, is it? So. Exactly. No, and that's that is a very real 
part of DC, but yeah. one thing that, that Nick and I are really excited about being here and, and explaining to other people is that is by no means the only part of DC. And yeah. there's, there's really, we've, we've come to learn by living there four or five years, each of us, um, there is really a thriving, creative, um, collaborative-minded spirit in DC that, that a lot of people don't know about and is really a shame. So. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, you know, it was a real pleasure talking to you guys. And, uh, you know, I would encourage people to go and check out the website, uh, which is uh, at... Uh, home, home, homestage.us. Homestage.us. As in, as in us, as not US, but us, as in we, because <laughs> we build it together. That's, that's my... <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And are you also on Twitter if people want to follow you on yeah, Facebook? Yeah, at, ho at Homestage DC. Yep. And I tweeted at you, so, yep. But, uh, yeah, yeah check great. us out. We, we try to tweet about shows coming up, and, and we're tweeting about our adventures this, this week, so yeah, that's, that's, that's fun. Great. And I don't know, I've got a few listeners in D.C., so I'm sure that uh, if you go and check out the website, I'm sure you'll find some interesting gigs to go All to. All kinds of great shows coming or up. Or if you are passing through D.C. for any reason, then there's definitely uh, lots of stuff to do there. And I uh, know I've been to D.C., and uh, I don't think I had a lot to do at night. So uh, if I'd known about this now last year, then I would have <laughs> uh, known what to do. So <laughs> that's great. Well, it's a fantastic project, and thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much. We really love your show and look forward to seeing it. So thanks. That's great. And thanks for listening to the DMT coverage of South by Southwest. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com.